As the health care reform debate intensifies on Capitol Hill, we spend the hour today with a former top executive from one of the nation's largest health insurance companies who has begun exposing some of the industry's dirty secrets. This whistleblower testified before the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation last month. My name is Wendell Potter, and for 20 years I worked as a senior executive at health, health insurance companies, and I saw how they confuse their customers and dump the sick, uh, so all they, so also they can satisfy their Wall Street investors. Wendell Potter joins us today for the hour. Up until last year, he was the head of corporate communications at Cigna, one of the nation's largest for-profit health insurance companies. He served as Cigna's chief corporate spokesperson. He also once headed communications at Humana, another large for-profit health insurer. In 2007, Wendell Potter helped spearhead the healthcare industry's campaign against Michael Moore's movie, Sicko. Today, he's a fellow at the Center for Media and Democracy and is becoming one of the most prominent industry whistleblowers. I sat down with Wendell Potter earlier this week. I worked for Cigna for 15 years, and I was a spokesman or spokesperson for Cigna for all of that time. In uh, probably the last four or five years, I was uh, the, the head of corporate communications and also the chief spokesman for the company. So why have you decided to speak out? You know, when I left, I left voluntarily. It was uh, a little over a year ago. I just decided I didn't want to keep doing that. I had. Uh, no longer felt that what I was doing was the right thing. But I didn't, I didn't decide to start speaking out until just uh, earlier this year uh, when I started seeing the evidence that the insurance industry's PR and lobbying campaigns were apparently paying off like they did in the, in the early 90s when they were uh, leading the effort to kill the Clinton plan and how they've killed every meaningful health care reform initiative since then. But you were a critical part of that, um, being uh, in communications and then head of communications at Cigna. I was. I was uh, a person who was uh, often speaking for not just the company, but sometimes the industry. I spent a lot of time working with uh, my colleagues at other companies uh, on task, f task forces and uh, uh, trade association committees to help develop the, the strategy and the tactics. Uh, so yes, I, uh, I did a lot of that. So. As a consequence, I know pretty much the game plan that they have developed and, and use and the talking points that they, they use and send out to uh, people who they think will say the things they want them to say. And what are those talking points? What is the game plan of the health insurance industry? Well, the game plan is based on scare tactics. And, uh, of course, the, the thing they, they fear most is that the country will at some point gravitate toward a single payer plan. Uh, that's the, the ultimate fear that they have. But currently, uh, and they know that right now that is not something that's on the legislative table, and they've been very successful in making sure that it isn't. Uh, they, they fear even the public insurance option that's being proposed. Uh, and that, that was part of President Obama's campaign platform, uh, his health care platform. And they'll pull, pull out all the stops they can to defeat that, and they'll be working with their ideological allies, with the business community, with conservative pundits and editorial writers to try to scare people into thinking that uh, embracing a public health insurance option would lead us down the slippery slope, excuse me, slippery slope toward socialism and that you will be, uh, in essence, putting a government bureaucrat between you and your doctor. That is that, you know, they've used those talking points for years and, and in years past they've always worked. What turned you? Why did you change? I changed because over the last two or three years, I began seeing more than I'd ever seen before and, and became more knowledgeable of how health insurance, industry, how health insurance companies make money, how they uh, maximize profits. Uh, the companies that I worked for were two of the biggest for-profit health insurance companies. And over the past 15 years, since the last time we had this debate, the health insurance industry has uh, consolidated to the point that now there are about seven very large for-profit health insurance companies that dominate the market. They have begun shifting their business model away from managed care, which, frankly, I used to think was a, a great uh, model, a great concept for uh, uh, the delivery of health care. But they've moved, they're moving away from that to what they refer to as consumer-driven or consumer-directed care. 
And it really is just a euphemism for shifting the financial burden from insurers and employers onto the, the shoulders of working men and women. I saw that happening, but I also saw uh, uh, how the, the, you know, the things that they do to uh, maximize their profit, which really uh, boils down to dumping the sick. What do you mean dumping the sick? Two different ways that they do this. Uh, in the individual insurance market, uh, we've seen quite a bit of news coverage, especially in California. Uh, when insurance companies uh, uh, in the, who, are, who are active in the individual market, and this means when, when you don't get your insurance coverage through your workplace, you, about the only option you have is to buy it directly from an insurance company, and usually it's, uh, it's much more costly than it is uh, through, if you buy it or get it through your employer. Once you file a claim, if you uh, are unfortunate enough to uh, get very sick or have an accident and file a claim, uh, you very often will find that your insurance company will go back and look at your application to see if there might be a chance that you either uh, didn't disclose something that you knew about in the past or inadvertently didn't disclose something or might not have known about a pre-existing condition. They'll use that as evidence that you were uh, committing fraud and they'll revoke your uh, policy or they call it rescinding your policy, leaving you holding the, the bag, making you uh, completely responsible for all the medical bills. That's one way that they, they dump people who, are, who need insurance the most. Another is uh, uh, if you are employed uh, particularly with a small business and uh, your insurance, your, your employer gets his or her uh, insurance through one of the large insurers and uh, if s just one person in your uh, your company files a claim uh, that the underwriters uh, think is too high, if it uh, skews uh, what they uh, think is the appropriate medical experience or claim experience, when that business comes up for renewal, they very likely will jack up the rates so much that your employer has no alternative but to uh, leave and uh, and leave you and, and all of your co-workers without insurance. Uh, either that or they, they may cut benefits or try to shop for coverage somewhere else. But the end result is you may find yourself dumped into the roles and the ranks of the uninsured.